With the official NBA season starting on December 22nd, I decided now was as good of a time as any to share my early predictions for all the NBA awards. So in today's video, I will be discussing who I think will win the 2021 NBA MVP, 6th Man of the Year, Most Improved Player, Defensive Player of the Year, and Rookie of the Year. Please like this video to show YouTube you messed with my video. Subscribe to my channel to help me reach 550 subscribers before the end of 2020. And comment on this video to start a conversation with me because I can respond to all comments. And play that intro. For the 2021 MVP, I have Luka Doncic winning this award, and this is because last season he proved he's a top 7-8 to eight player and he showed he is capable of putting up MVP numbers as he averaged 29 points, nearly 9 rebounds, and nearly 9 assists on efficient shooting. The only thing I fear with his chances is that most MVPs over the past few years have been the best player on the top 3 seed in their conference, and with Kristaps Porzingis being expected to miss the first First few weeks of the season, I fear this can hold Luka back from being a top 3 seed. But I do think there's a good chance that Dallas will surprise me and stay pretty good without Porzingis and then do really well when he returns. Some other candidates are Giannis and Nikumpo, who I think will have an MVP level season, but I don't think voters will want to give him 3 MVPs in a row, especially since in his last 2 seasons, he flamed out embarrassingly in the playoffs, so I don't think he's getting it. Another candidate is the runner up from last season in LeBron James, but I don't think he will win it, mainly due to the short offseason he got, and I don't think he will be going 100% in this regular season. I also think AD might be effective that affected by the short regular season, but I do think he'll be better than LeBron stat-wise in the regular season, and I think that decrease, decreases both of their chances. Another candidate is Steph Curry who I believe won't win it simply due to his team record because I expect the Warriors to be at the bottom of the playoff seats. But I do think Steph will put up similar numbers to his 2016 MVP season, but I think those numbers will be used to get a 6th or 7th seed, not for a 73-9 team. So yes, I have Luka Doncic being the 2021 MVP because I think he can put up the stats and maybe secure a top 3 seed. In the case of the 2021 Defensive Player of the Year, I actually see Anthony Davis winning this award because just last season, he should have won it because I believe he was just as versatile as Giannis but a better shot blocker and I think next season, he will be just as good on defense as he was next last season and I think the voters will give it to him because I think they will be reluctant to give the award to Giannis two years in a row, especially with the way Giannis was too scared to guard Jimmy Butler and then in the finals 80s up to guard Jimmy and I yes I know defensive player of the year is a regular season award but I do think will be at the back of the minds of some of the voters some other candidates is the player who won defensive player of the year last season in Giannis Antetokounmpo and I still think he has a really good chance to win the award but I just don't think he will get it two years in a row especially since I think it will be close between him and Anthony Davis and I give the slight edge to Anthony Davis since he's never won it and I think he's just a better defensive player in general. Another candidate is Ben Simmons, and I think he has a good chance to win it since he's a very versatile defender who can guard most big men and all perimeter players. But I think Joel Embiid on his team will decrease his chance of winning since Embiid is a top 10 defender in the league as well. Another candidate is Rudy Gobert, who has just recently gotten a max contract, and I would have given him a better chance of getting the award if he didn't get this contract. And that is because without his contract extension, he could have been more motivated to be better on defense, since last season his effort at times was lacking. And now in the NBA, they need more versatility than effort, and Gobert lacks that a lot. But yes, I do have Anthony Davis winning the Defensive Player of the Year award because he will be the best defender on one of the best defensive teams in the league. With the 2021 Rookie of the Year, I see 
Killian Hayes get in this award? And this is because all of the keys will be handed to him since the Pistons have little talent, especially at the guard position. And he will have Derek Rose to mentor him throughout the season, which I think could elevate his play. Although this Pistons roster sucks, it isn't so horrible to the point where defenses will be able to just, to just focus solely on Killian. Killian's a solid shooter and ball handler who I think will put up numbers. My biggest fear with his chances is just the fact that he plays in Detroit and won't get as much possibility, I mean publicity as other prospects. Some other candidates is LaMelo Ball who I think has a really good chance to win the award. But I think the thing going against him is the fact that the Hornets already have two good guards in Devontae Graham and Terry Rozier who are players who can drastically reduce the time that he gets on the court and the amount of shots that he takes. And I think all of that will add up to his stats being worse than Killian's. Another candidate is Anthony Edwards, but I don't think he'll get the award because Minnesota already has two ball dominant star players in Carl Anthony Towns and D'Angelo Russell who will take shots away from him. Another candidate is Obi Toppin, who I think also has a good chance to win it, but the only reason I think Killian will win it is because he's just straight up better than Toppin and has more supporting players. With the 2021 Six Man of the Year award, I think Norman Powell will get this award because last season, Powell was one of the more underrated players off the bench as he averaged 16 points per game on nearly 50% from the field and nearly 40% from three. And I think next season, he could have similar production and maybe even more with him being more used to being one of the main scorers on the team. Another candidate is Lou Williams, but I don't see him Williams being on the Clippers by the trade deadline and I think many have realized that Williams is only capable of scoring inconsistently and being a huge black hole on defense which means his impact isn't as much as you would think looking at his stats. Another candidate is the guy who actually won the award last season in Mantra's Harrell. And the only reason I don't see him winning it is because I feel like with him playing alongside Dennis Schroeder, who loves to shoot off the bench, he won't be scoring as much. Another candidate is the runner up from last year in Dennis Schroeder. And the only reason I don't see him getting the award is because there's a chance that he might start. But if he does come off the bench, I could see him getting the award. But yeah, I choose Norman Powell for the 6th man of the year award because he is one of the more efficient scorers off the bench and is a two-way player unlike most of the other candidates. In the case of the 2021 most improved player award, I think Christian Woods will win this award and this is because over the past two seasons when given the playtime, Christian has shown that he could be an all-star level player and in Houston he will be starting. And if James Harden gets traded, like what I think will happen, I think Woods might be the Rockets number two option on offense and maybe even number one depending on how good John Wall returns. In the 12 games he started last season, he averaged 22 points and 9 rebounds on 56% from the field and 40% from three. And in Houston, he will be starting all season and he will be getting all of the shots that he wants. And alongside John Wall, who is one of the better playmakers in the NBA, he can create easier shots for Woods. Houston also has many floor spacers who can space the floor for Woods and help him score easily. Last season, Woods averaged 13 points per game and 6 rebounds on 56% from the field and 38% from 3. So there's plenty of room for improvement and if he averages 20 to 22 points per game and 10 rebounds, that is a big enough jump for him to win the award. Another candidate is Shea Gilgis Alexander and although I think there's a pretty good chance that he jumps from his 19 points per game from last season to 25 plus points per game this season due to him being OKC's number one option due to there being no more Chris Paul, Dennis Schroeder, or Gallinari, Shea will be the only good offensive player on his team which means teams will game plan him and I can see him being inefficient since he isn't a great shooter and doesn't have elite athleticism or strength. Another candidate is OG Ananobi 
who I do think will improve a lot next season, but with Toronto having many offensive options, I doubt his points will go any higher than 15 points per game, and last year he averaged 11, so I don't think that's a big enough improvement. Another candidate is Darius Garland, and although I think Garland can have one of the biggest leaps in the league and be a 20 plus points per game scorer, most improved players are rarely given a second year players. So yeah, I think Christian Wood will get this award and be an all-star caliber player. Anyways guys, that's it for the video. Let me know your early predictions for the NBA awards. Please like this video if you like the video. Subscribe to my channel to help me reach 500 subscribers before the end of 2020. And comment on this video to start a conversation with me because I respond to all comments. Also check out my IG in the description and I'm out.